Hello, I'm Alistair Kant, the Director of the Lister Housing Cooperative, a small housing association in central Edinburgh. We're here in one of our typical flats. All our flats are Georgian tenements and they're B-listed. And a, a typical feature here is the windows. They are what's called timber vertical sliding sash uh, windows, single glazed. And there's, you'll see there's six over six panes, six panes here, six panes there. This is one sash and there's the top sash here. The main problem from an energy conservation and energy efficiency point of view is traditionally this glass is single glazed, very poor heat retention. And there's also gaps here to let the window slide up and down, which let drafts through. The project has been to try and tackle these issues and the other features about these windows is, as you can see, quite often they have nice shutter panelling. These are false shutters that have been recreated to recreate the look. But in many flat of our flats, we've got the original shuttering. You want to keep that, you don't want to interfere with it, and they can be reopened to insulate as well. The windows here, they're very good for, obviously, ventilation and daylight, but it's the energy conservation that's not so good. So we've been trying to look at ways of, of improving the energy conservation, but also keeping with the style and the listing and keeping the conservation people on side who obviously want to improve the energy efficiency, but don't want the, the overall look and character of the windows or the building or the setting changed. OK, we've now swung in the lower sash of this uh, Georgian window to see from the outside how the uh, double glazing unit has gone in. We've, the units we've used in this one are from one firm and we've got six different firms doing different units and different uh, specifications unit in the nine flats. In this case, as in all the cases, the, the, the glazing, the firm installing the glazing has been very careful to not damage any of the wood. The only thing that's been discarded has been the, tim the, the glass. And in this, in all the cases here, all the glass is about 20 years old, not older. So we're not losing any historic materials. But as you can see, we've got, the difficulty here is that uh, the, 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 even though the double glazing unit is very slim, the space you've got to play with in terms of the timber of the glazing bars, the astragals, is even very small. So what you've got here is the, the sealant, the putty, to keep the, the unit in place, both from a sort of security point of view, but also a decorative. Usually there's a nice angled chamfer here. This is very thin and the absolute minimum needed to make the, the glazing unit work. It is working, but it does mean that there's no more opportunity to get a thicker double glazing unit in. Um, what you can see here is obviously the the astragal, the thin astragals have been retained, but you're not really seeing much of the astragal proud of the glass. The, 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 the putty immediately starts sloping in towards the double glazing unit. The other thing I should point out is while we did this project, although the, the changing a single plane glass to double glazed unit is going to help the surface temperature considerably, the other aspect of energy conservation in, in the flat is that there's drafts from the perimeter, the edges of the, the sashes. So at the same time, the, uh, we've asked the installing firm to basically put in some draft stripping round the edges of the sash that either, depending on the system, is either down the edges of the sash here or else they're on the equivalent edges in the frame. In this case, they're on the, the frame and on the top of the sash here and on the bottom of the sash there. So that although the focus of the project was on trying out different double glazing units, for the benefit of our tenants who are in fuel poverty, we've also done the draft proofing because it's not much extra to put that in at the same time. In terms of how they did the work, they took both top and bottom sashes away for the day to their workshop and brought them back before the end of the day to then refit and do all the necessary ropes and adjustments, etc. And that was all done uh, within the space of one day for each window. Where necessary, because of the extra weight, they would add a little bit onto the weights that hold the um, sash ropes at the other end of the sash rope, which makes the sash balance within the frame. So again, that's all been 
covered as part of the project, you can't just simply stick the unit in. You've got to weigh it and get the, the weights right. Okay, so I'm Nicholas Heath from Changeworks. We've worked with Alistair on this project. Um, as Alistair was saying, lots of these old traditional flats and, and properties have timber shutters which can be used at night time to help improve insulation. So one of the energy improvement measures that's often uh, promoted for listed buildings and buildings in conservation areas over double glazing is secondary glazing. But one of the big problems with most secondary glazing systems is that the system sits on a separate frame some distance away from the window about here. So that would actually interfere with the shutters and it also means you get quite a big double reflection from outside. What we've been trying to look at is double glazing which building conservation officers and planning officers are happy with uh, that doesn't detract from the, the aesthetic value of the building. So conventional double glazing, you have quite a big space between the two layers of glass and there are two things which are, are not popular in terms of building conservation and double glazing. The first is the glass because the two layers of glass make it more reflective from the outside and the second layer, if it's modern plate glass, which it generally will be, is additionally more reflective again than old-fashioned crown glass. The other thing which is difficult is the extra weight of the glass and the depth of the double glazing panes means that you generally need thicker, heavier astragals, these dividing bars that separate the panes of glass. So what we've tried to do is, as well as retaining as much of the original window as possible to help minimise embodied energy and, and keep using these materials which are in good nick, um, is to look at specific slim profile double glazing systems where there's only a very small gap between the two panes of glass and you can actually take your existing window, remove the panes of single glass and install these bespoke, various systems of bespoke double glazing which are designed specifically with listed buildings and historic buildings in mind so that you can keep the slim profile of these astragals so that, that diminishes the, any, any visual impact um, and secondly so that you, you again minimise this reflective aspect from the outside. Uh, so we're now over the road at Lister Housing Cooperative's main offices. Um, the double glazing project we carried out on a corner tenement across the road from here we did ask for permission to install some of this slim profile double glazing a couple of years ago, um, but it was contrary to policy, so the planning department refused permission. Uh, this was looking at window improvements as part of an earlier project we did called Energy Heritage, where we, we carried out a whole range of insulation improvements to these buildings. So the next best thing in the absence of double glazing, we felt, was to look at secondary glazing. Um, as I mentioned before, there's typical problems with separate secondary glazing we were keen to avoid, so we didn't want anything that would get in the way of shutters or mean people couldn't use their window ledges or sit too far away from the original window and create a big double reflection from the outside. So we installed this system, which is a bespoke system designed with conservation grade buildings in mind. Um, it's called Storm Windows and it's very, very discreet from the outside because it sits so close to the, the original window and from the inside because it has a very, very slim frame and it uses low emissivity glass so you get a very good U value um, for compared to standard secondary glazing. And the way it works is it just sits on a magnetic aluminium frame, a very, very thin frame that's fitted right up in the staff bead of the original window and then it just functions like a normal sash window. So you open your window like this and then you can just access your other window to open for ventilation. If you need to clean or maintain your original window, then you can just pop this off the magnetic seal and likewise you can take it off the seal and store it in the summer months if it's too hot. Um, so this we felt was a very good compromise and a very good solution given that you're pretty much allowed to install any secondary glazing system without having to go through formal planning procedures. The compromise of this system with any, double, any secondary glazing system um, is that you have two windows, you have a second window, so it is a bit more fiddly, so, which is why, going back to the building across the road, we were still very keen to look at what you could do to the original window without having to add in extra windows 